WSBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. Governor Albert Bryan Jr. is in our nation's capital meeting with various federal agencies in Washington, D.C. He's there for the National Governors Association winter meetings. In his role as co-chair of the National Governors Association's Community Renewal Task Force, Governor Bryan led a panel with Arizona's governor and private sector leaders on the impacts of COVID-19 on the workforce, and its effects on workers and the economy. He also met with Pedro Pierluisi of Puerto Rico and Lou Leon Guerrero of Guam to talk about issues the U.S. territories share. Things like broadband technology, where the U.S. Virgin Islands is among the leaders in access and deployment of broadband in the United States' rural areas. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent Rachel Knapp will be speaking with Governor Bryan to learn more about these meetings and how he hopes his presence here in D.C. will benefit the territory. So as we begin a new week, active COVID-19 case counts here in the territory have gone down somewhat significantly. According to the latest numbers from the Virgin Islands Department of Health, there are currently 525 active COVID cases territory-wide. Now that's more than 300 fewer cases than last week. With 315 active cases on St. Croix, 178 on St. Thomas, and 32 on St. John. So while Governor Bryan's usual Monday news conference has been rescheduled to later this week, our USVI News' Ali Bornvenek has an update on COVID along with news from the Department of Education. Emily, a quick update on COVID-19 in the territory. Governor Albert Bryan Jr. has rescheduled his weekly press conference to Tuesday, so we'll have more info then. In the meantime, we do know the latest numbers of COVID-19, and that's 720 active cases, 411 on St. Croix, 260 on St. Thomas, and 49 on St. John. This is a drastic reduction to the Omicron variant surge that we saw several weeks ago, so this is good news that the numbers are going down. In the meantime, the Department of Education is reporting that they are continuing to move forward now that the students are back into in-person learning. They say that they are now responding to class schedule changes, meaning that depending on the school and the different classes, some school days will be in-person and some school days will be virtual. For more information on what this could mean for your student, visit the Department of Education's website. In St. Thomas, Ali Bornvenek, USVI News. Yes, glad to see the kids are back inside the classrooms. A little discrepancy to those numbers, but again, the latest numbers from the Virgin Islands Department of Health as we begin this new week show there are currently 525 active cases throughout the territory. And across the nation, a new spinoff of the Omicron corona coronavirus variant is catching some attention now. It's becoming the dominant strain of COVID-19 in some parts of the world right now. But top U.S. health officials say there's no need to panic over the lineage. Mandy Gaither explains in today's Health Minute. It's called BA2, a subvariant of Omicron, first detected in mid-November, now identified in at least 49 countries, including the U.S. We're keeping a very close eye on it. Looks a bit more transmissible but not necessarily more severe. Like the more familiar version of Omicron, BA2 has a large number of changes, about 20 concentrated in the spike protein, the part of the virus that's targeted by vaccines. Does it evade our immune system? Does it evade the immunity that we've acquired from Omicron infection or the vaccines? Most of the evidence so far, and it's preliminary, suggests it doesn't. A report from the UK suggests current vaccines protect about as well against this subvariant as it does the original Omicron variant, with better protection against symptoms, an average of about 70% two weeks after a booster. The only thing I feel pretty confident about is that we'll have more, more variants, we'll have future variants. So let's begin to prepare. Health experts say no matter what the future throws at us, we now have the tools we need to be ready, including COVID-19 testing, widespread masking, and the best protection against the virus, vaccination, and boosters. So whenever the next variant hits, we're going to be ready. We won't have to shut down schools. We won't have to shut down our lives. We'll manage our way through it. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. In the U.S., roughly 100 cases caused by BA2 have been reported from at least 20 states. A cruise ship halted a satellite launch at Cape Canaveral. The launch director called a hold with seconds to spare on Sunday's liftoff of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. 
The rocket set to launch a radar surveillance satellite for Italy's space agency. The reason for the last second punt? Well, an apparently errant cruise ship, which was either in or about to enter the no-go zone around the launch site. Airlines are struggling to find pilots right now. Next year, airlines expect to have a shortage of more than 12,000 pilots. So United Airlines has launched a program to train the next generation of pilots, including promoting other workers to fill those vacancies. Reporter Errol Barnett got a look at the new program. Lifting off at dawn in the Sonora Desert means catching this special morning view in the Valley of the Sun. It felt like a joyride. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love flying. Mother of two, Ricky Foster is at the helm, learning the ropes with her flight instructor. A former flight attendant, she has been inspired to upgrade her wings. Show me an excuse and I'll show you how you can overcome that, you know? Foster is one of 59 students in the inaugural classes of United Airlines Aviate Academy in Goodyear, Arizona. CEO Scott Kirby says this is their effort to combat the persistent staffing shortage on the flight deck. We've got over 100 regional aircraft that effectively aren't flying because there's not enough pilots to fly them. By FAA regulation, pilots have to retire at age 65. And by one estimate, almost half of them will within 15 years. Couple that with the pandemic, which slowed the rate of new pilots taking to the skies, and it's almost impossible to keep pace with all the open seats. One of the biggest sources for airlines was the military. The problem today is there not that many pilots in the military, there are a lot of drone pilots. So that doesn't really help in terms of being able to bring people in. United expects 50% of its pilots to come from this program, and half of those will be women and people of color. For Foster, who was originally from Jamaica, this journey is also about how her 17-year-old son and 6-year-old daughter see her. They got to come in and check out the airplane, and I have a picture of my son sitting by my name. He was so proud in the picture, like, this is my mom, you know. <laughs> Future flyers bringing it home for the family. A look at your local forecast is straight ahead here on USBI News. Plus, the 2022 Winter Olympic Games start Friday. Speaking of Jamaica, a team to keep an eye on is the Jamaican bobsled team. For the first time in over two decades, they're heading to the Games. Hear their excitement when USBI News comes right back. With the Beijing Winter Olympics kicking off this week, we're hearing from three of the four-man Jamaican bobsled team on their preparations ahead of the Olympic Games and how COVID has impacted their training. In England, Animoy Turgut, Sham Wayne Stevens and Ashley Watson. Look, this is a four-man team, right? Your teammate Matthew Webke, as I understand it, is busy with last-minute preparation. So you are, there are actually four of you, um, but you're not there yet. Lads, why? Nimroy. Um, because of the strict um, COVID protocols and stuff, we have to mm. make sure that everything is sorted and we're in the best health as possible going to Beijing. It's got to be tough on you. I mean, you know, you do not want to get COVID before you get there. Before we talk, Shan Wayne, about... Um, these tight COVID restrictions when you get there. What have you guys been, been, been doing to avoid catching COVID ahead of these games? Uh, so we've actually created our own little bubble. So uh, we've literally mm. just, whoever's going to the games is literally just been us. Uh, we literally, we go to training, we come back to the house. We've been hand sanitizing, wearing masks everywhere we go in. So we've been extremely careful to limit contact with uh, people that we don't need to basically be coming uh, in contact with. Ashley, has that got in, in the way of your training? Yes, um, because hmm. um, you don't want to go to gyms when there's going to be a lot of people around, so you're limited to hmm. facilities to train with. So it does hinder it quite a lot, but you just have to make what you, what you have really and um, invest in equipment and train hard at home. 
Yeah, no, I get it. Look, and, and, and you're hoping, I know you've got to get your paperwork sorted out, but you are hoping, uh, clearly, to get out there uh, before uh, the competition starts, which is in a week or so's time. When you get there, um, these restrictions are pretty swinging. Um, what do you, Nimroy, understand about um, how you'll be able to get around and, and just what the protocols are at this point? Um, honestly, at this point, we are not 100% sure how the protocol and how the setup is mm. there at the moment. But um, as a unit, as a team, um, we're going to stick together and just follow the protocol when we get there. Good stuff. All right. Well, this is the first time in 24 years that Jamaica has had a four-man bob team at the Winter Olympics. Guys, I am old enough to remember that first team back in 1988. I am that old. They inspired that great film, Cool Runnings. I'm assuming that that was before, I, I, I'm guessing, you guys were born. What does it mean to Jamaicans to have this team in the Winter Olympics? How, 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 are, you, how are you being uh, seen back home? Uh, no, every, we've had uh, an immense amount of support all from uh, all around the world. We've had messages yeah. from from so many people saying how uh, they're excited to see us uh, compete again, and um, we've been an, actually been an inspiration to a lot of people as well. So, and uh, no, that's really uh, really good. So we're just going to go out there, try and put on the best performance that we can, and we're going to represent Jamaica, represent ourselves, and represent everybody that loves us. Uh, right. Good, good, good on you. And I can tell you there will be millions of people out there watching this show tonight who will be backing you every step of the way. Finally, Ashley, are you looking for genuine success? What will that success look like? Well, we're not going to go to the Olympics um, just, there, just to be there. We're going to go there to compete. And good on you. We'll be teams to be here. So we're looking to be... We want medals. Of course we want medals, um, but... We want to be the best Jamaican team in history, so we want to be 14th placed at least. You want to be, sorry, I missed what you said, 14th place oh. at least? Yes, yes, definitely, yeah. Um, because 14th Good on you guys. Because 14th place? Yeah, because 14th place is the best place Jamaica had finished um, previously, and we want to better yeah. that and become the greatest team in history. For Jamaica, and hopefully that would inspire the next generation of um, Jamaican boxing athletes. Can't say more than that, lads. Good luck, and uh, send our love to your uh, colleague Matthew. Um, busy with uh, preps. Uh, we wish you the absolute best. See you on the Thank other side. Much. Come Thank back you. and talk to us. All right, so the Beijing Olympics kick off on Friday with the opening ceremonies, and we'll be keeping an eye and keeping you posted on how the Jamaican bobsled team is doing. And